Hi guys, today I'll be doing a comparison video to compare the Logitech G29 racing steering wheel with the Logitech G923 racing steering wheel. So the G923 is the latest racing steering wheel from Logitech. There's two variants of this. This is the PlayStation version, but you can also get an Xbox version as well. We'll be seeing if it's actually worth the extra spend to get this latest model. Now coming in close on both the wheels, you've still got the center marker blue still the wheel itself looks identical there's no real change on there both finished in leather all the way around aluminium over here and in terms of controls the controls are identical on both of them you've still got the 24 point selector on both of them the buttons on the newer version have all gone in a black finish whereas you can see some color on the g29 looking around the center that's the major difference here you've got the G logo here for Logitech and you've got the PlayStation 1 on the G29. Now coming around the side here you can see the paddle shifts on there. Now the G29 has a silver finish whereas the 923 has a black finish on there. The feel of the paddle shifts are very similar just the sound has a slightly different pitch on there. So just to demonstrate Coming around the back and looking at the shape of it, it's identical. The only difference really is the logo on there. So the G29 has Logitech and the G logo and the newer one, the 923, has just the G on there. You still have the same vents on there and the clamp adjusters just over there on either side. Looking directly at the back, you can see the areas look identical and you've got the cable management areas just down below as well. Side view wise, the only real difference is you've got the True Force logo on the newer one and nothing on the older version. And same thing on the other side, just the True Force logo on the new one. Now looking underneath, again, it looks identical, which is quite a surprise. So you've even got the hole positions which are the same, screw positions which are the same, and the screw in points if you want to bolt it onto a SIM frame. Connections wise, same again. So you've got the shifter location here, You've got pedal location here and power together with that also the cable management points here and you can also wrap around the usb connection point which will go to your either playstation or pc next thing is the clamping mechanism and you can see for yourself they're identical on both of them same method as before you can just turn it over here once you've got it in position just push it down and it will lock into place and if you want to release it push it again and it pops up and you can loosen it up now even the area at the bottom you've got a gap there but if you had a thicker table or thicker area to clamp it onto the plastic pieces here can be removed as well so on both of them it's the same method you literally just get a screwdriver and just pop it off like so it comes off and just to show these they're the same as well you can see there's no difference in these and looking at the clamps with the plastic bit off, they look the same too. Now comparing the pedals in terms of design, it's identical, you can see for yourself. The only difference really is the logos on there. So you've got the G on the new one and the old one has the Logitech G on there. Now in terms of the pedals themselves, accelerator feels the same, pressing that. The only difference really is a brake. So they've changed the mechanism behind the newer one to give it a more realistic feel and nice bit of pressure on this. In terms of clutch, same again with that as well. Looking underneath, you can see again, design is same, and even the position of the pads, the rubber pads to stop it from slipping on a wooden floor is the same location. You've got the carpet grippers on there as well, so if I push that up, pushes up, and there you go, carpet grippers. And then you've got the screw locations to attach it on a SIM frame. Same points there as well. Have to admit, when you do use it on a wooden floor, you do get some slippage, so keep that in mind. It's best to have some sort of frame to bolt it onto so you don't get any movement on there. In terms of the driving force shifter you could get with the G29, it also works with the 923. It's great that it works, but it's a bit of a shame, I think. They should have developed this further to have a newer take on it. Now, I've set up both the wheels with a shifter, and now if I connect them up at the same time to my computer, there you go, they both have the calibration stage, so they both spin around just to calibrate themselves. This is how they appear in the app itself, so the G Hub software, and if we go to the G29 first of all, 
just to show the options available. Obviously you can do reassignments of the buttons available. Then coming over to the steering wheel, you've got some settings there. So operating range can be changed, sensitivity, centering, spring strength can also be amended. And then going over to the pedal sensitivity. So you can change the sensitivity on the pedals and you can combine them together as well. So if I click there now, you can see the options available. Now coming back from here, going to the G923, similar options again. You can see the key assignments here, so you can reassign the options on there. Then you've got the steering wheel. Same settings available at the beginning, but slight difference down below. So you've actually got a true force option available as well. So if I scroll down a little bit more, apply settings from the game. So you can apply them from the game or you can adjust to your preference on here. Now coming to the pedal sensitivity, again, options are the same. So the key difference here in the G-Hub software really between the two devices is the true force side of things. And obviously that will only be dictated by the game giving that option available. Now looking at the top of the G29, coming in close just over here, if I zoom in, you can see we've got a selector here, and this is to select between PS3 and PS4. So there's a selector, we can just flip it across if we've got a PS3, and there's an LED indicator just over here at the side. And looking on the G923, you can see the selector's gone now, there's just an LED indicator on this one. Now started up the game grid, now if I go into options here and we go on to controls and then Logitech G29 that's what I got plugged in at the moment we edit the device and these are the options you have available so standard sort of options and coming over to advanced that's what you see vibration and feedback so let's jump into the game now see so if I accelerate there's no real feel of the car on this Obviously I can feel a pull on the wheel itself and feedback is good, level of feedback is nothing to be disappointed with. Now if I put my mic close to the base here just to show, give you an idea of the sound levels coming out of there. Performance feels good, you can tell by yourself, noise levels and vibration levels are very minimal on there. So a good gaming experience with this. And now I've connected up the G923, now if we come over to options, controls, and we've, you can see there you've got the 923 connected, coming on to edit, and again, options are the same on here. And then if we come over to advanced input, that's what you can see. Now looking here, you can see there are some Logitech True Force options in here. So this is a game which is set up to make the most of the True Force side of things. Now one thing if you notice with the G29, the rev counter over here, the LED indicators wasn't working. It does work with the G29, but some games obviously it won't be working because it's not set up to work with them. So now if we jump back into the race, and feedback on the wheel is very similar, but the only difference is you feel more happening on there. You can actually sort of feel the surface here. So it's giving a subtle rumble. And with the G29, you do sort of feel that when you come off the road, but here you're actually feeling it while you're on the road. So the actual surface itself is sort of coming through, if that makes sense. Now if I accelerate, you can see the rev counter going up. So now if I bring my microphone close in on the bass, you can hear the difference in the sounds being made from the actual motors there.
So very subtle differences on this and it's quite interesting how the true force gives a bit more realism I guess on the wheel. It's very subtle, it really is. So in terms of differences most things are just identical. It's just that subtle rumble that you're feeling as you're driving along with this. Okay, so I've started Gran Turismo Sport on the PlayStation 5. In terms of performance with the wheel, it feels very good. Get a lot of feedback from the wheel itself. And again, motors-wise, on the base, you don't feel much from there, so there's not much vibration or anything. So now, if I just put my microphone near to the base here, and I drive, hear the noise of the car so you feel the force feedback on the wheel itself but no real rumble on the surface of the road so that's the key difference here between this wheel and the latest one with true force but in terms of experience, feels very good. Now I've got the Logitech G923 connected up to the PlayStation 5 with Gran Turismo Sport running. And again, rev counter is working and at maximum it actually goes to blue, so slightly different in terms of color. Performance wise, very similar. Don't feel as much of a rumble on the road with this though. So even coming off here, there is a subtle amount on the wheel itself, but I don't think the game's quite ready for the true force side of things. Now, if I bring my mic in close to the base here, So now listening to the motor itself, you can tell there isn't much happening on there. So this sort of proves the fact that the true force really depends on the game. So you may be buying it thinking, oh wow, I've got the newest wheel, I'm making the most of the true force. Not really, because if you're going to be playing old games on this, you're not really going to feel any sort of difference with it. Now, if you are going to be playing games which are ready for it, you will feel a subtle difference on there. So in terms of performance, I have to say they're both very similar. You know, you can't notice much of a difference from there. They do say the brake pedal itself is a slight difference and it is all very subtle. And again, even with the true force, I'd say it's, it's a tough one in a way. If you've got the money, I'd suggest maybe going for the newer option only because with some of the newer games coming out, it'll probably make the most for it but it is just a subtle rumble, really, with the wheel. So nothing that major. So really, it wouldn't make an immense amount of difference if you did just settle for the G29, or even the G920, which is the Xbox version of this. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone really deciding whether to go for the older wheel from Logitech or the newer one. It is a tough call, definitely, and the difference is very subtle on here. Hang around for the end cards, I'll have some more gaming tech. Drop me a like if you've liked this video, and let me know what you think. Do you think it's actually worth spending that extra amount of money for the True Force? Thanks for viewing, and see you in the next one.